This is what we've been warning you about. Jonathan Rumi has been given an enormous platform, and he's using it to promote unbiblical and abominable doctrines such as praying to the dead. In poking around about Lonnie Frisbee, I discovered that his funeral was held at Robert Schuller's Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, California, yeah. which is now a Catholic cathedral. It's ironic. Yeah. Isn't it? So yeah. interesting. He was a big fan. Lonnie was a fan of St. Francis. When he started preaching, he would... I could walk. see that. Mm -hmm. He had a walking stick. He had a leather mantle. Uh, he probably was barefoot for a lot of the time. And uh, and he carried a, a bag slung around him uh, in which he had a bottle of um, olive oil that was stuffed with pieces of cinnamon and frankincense. And he would anoint people, you know, like... Oh, wow anoint people in the name of the father son holy spirit and and uh and so he had talked about like being a a, a fan of saint francis so um before i started work i went over to christ cathedral and uh i i sat by his grave and i prayed a rosary with him did you catch what he said listen to it again i i sat by his grave and i Pray to rosary with him. The Bible clearly forbids interacting with a deceased person. It's an abomination to the Lord. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations the Lord your God drives them out from before you. Deuteronomy 18, verses 10 to 12. Oh, he didn't realize he's buried there, too. He's, oh, yeah, he's buried there. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm going to have to go take a look at that. Yeah, it's 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 powerful. In fact, I sat down and I prayed with him. Um, the, the, the space just to his right is empty. So I got to sit down or lie. At one point, I even lied down because I just thought it would be kind of interesting to try to connect in some way. That's probably more information than you need or may even want to publish <laughs> But that said, uh, I, you know, I, it's the, the truth. And so I finished praying with him. And I said, Lonnie, I want to honor you with this film. And I really want to, um, to, to, to bring justice and, and, you know, the testament to the gifts of God's grace and, and powers that you, you know, displayed while you were on this earth. And so... If this is a good idea that I do this film, have somebody give me a sign. Give me a sign. Have God give me a sign. No one can deny that this man is steeped in paganism. Asking Lonnie, a dead man, for a sign is unbiblical and diabolical. He intentionally or unintentionally opens himself up to demons. And the minute the words left my mouth, behind me there was a door open to the cathedral and this giant cord rang out for about five seconds and then from started. the organ from the organ wow i hadn't heard it before and that's the very organ that used to be there when it was the chris it's the same organ that when really? it was the crystal cathedral mm -hmm. it was sent out and refurbished and whatnot but it's the same one so i heard that and i was like okay thanks for that <laughs> the true church has always understood that disastrous harm of indulgences, buying your own way out of purgatory by giving money to the system. The true church has always understood the false works, a righteousness that assumes that you can earn your way into heaven, the abomination of the worship of idols and relics, prayers for the dead, the perversion of forced celibacy. All of these things have been very clearly heresies, and the true church has always understood it. And at the top of the pile, the true church has always understood the Pope as a usurper of the headship of Christ over His church. We passionately highlighted in this video how the Chosen series is aimed to draw evangelicals closer to accepting ecumenism. Jesus? Yes. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I am Protestant, but I am making a show for everyone who loves Jesus. Several of you felt we were going too far, but pay close attention to what Jonathan Rumi said after the interviewer asked him how he got involved in the film's Chosen and Jesus Revolution. And I'm vaguely familiar with the evangelical world, more so because of the film, especially that Kingdom has been doing. 
Yeah. But it's another world. Yeah. And so what was it like for you to just suddenly become immersed in this? It's also a Christian world, mm -hmm. but it's a completely different Christian yeah. world than Catholics are used to. Yeah. Well, I think I think my introduction to this uh, ecumenical sense of uh, uh, fraternity uh, happened began with uh, the chosen, because mm -hmm. you know Dallas Jenkins is an evangelical Christian. Um, you know, there's a, a bunch of um, a variety of denominations working on that series, and when you work with each other, when you talk to each other, um, the thing that we all have in common is that we love Jesus. And, you know, that's, that's who we want to praise and worship. And, uh, and so, I mean, they're, they're brothers and sisters that are separated from us, right? Um, denominationally, but we're still all part of the same body of Christ. While the Catholic Church believes in several fundamental doctrines of Christianity, they fiercely reject some key doctrines, such as the doctrine of salvation, which the Bible clearly teaches that by our own works we cannot obtain salvation. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, verses 8 to 9. We believe one can only be saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone. But Catholicism says no. Being born again is a supernatural act. God does this. And it's by his grace that he does this. And it's for his glory that he does this. It is because of Christ that he does this. And it is by grace alone. We don't like this. Nor do our Catholic friends. Listen to this. The Council of Trent. Session 6, Canon 9. If anyone says that by faith alone the sinner is justified, so as to mean that nothing else is required to cooperate in order to obtain the grace of justification, let him be anathema. Again, Session 6, Canon 11. If anyone says that men are justified either by the imputation of righteousness, of the righteousness of Christ alone, or by the remission of sins alone, to the exclusion of the grace and love that is poured forth in their hearts by the Holy Spirit and is inherent in them, or even that the grace by which we are justified is only the favor of God, let him be anathema. And finally, if anyone says that the guilt is remitted to every penitent sinner after the grace of justification has been received and that the debt of eternal punishment is so blotted out that there remains no debt of temporal punishment to be discharged either in this world or in the next in purgatory before the entrance to the kingdom of heaven can be opened, let him be anathema. They do not preach the same gospel. Please join us in our fight for the truth. Please share our videos, subscribe, like, and comment. We appreciate your help. Once the line is blurred between Catholicism and Christianity, any Protestant can easily convert to Catholicism because it's just another Christian denomination like Baptist or Methodist. This is one of the biggest concerns we have about Jonathan. When you look at his social media account and read comments, you can see that Jonathan Rumi is influencing many Protestants to convert to Catholicism through these films. I love that community. I love their fearlessness in proclaiming the gospel to people that they meet. I love um, how they catechize, you know, in their, in their uh, services. Um, I think there's just, there's so much for us to learn and there's so much that they also appreciate about the tradition that they were born out of. And if I can help bridge that in some way as a performer or by my own witness through my work, um, then that, that becomes part of my, my holistic mission to serve God. Folks, he's not hiding what his agenda is. This is more than just acting movies. Jonathan is a Knight Templar, and by extension, Freemason, and many scholars believe that the Jesuits control Freemasonry. We addressed this topic in depth in this video. Jonathan may be an agent of the papacy working on behalf of the Pope to promote ecumenism and lead many Christians into apostasy. And if I can help bridge that in some way as a performer, or by my own witness through my work, um, then that, that becomes part of my, my holistic mission to serve God. How does promoting Catholicism and its false doctrine be considered serving God? Obviously, Jonathan is deceived and he needs Jesus. 
Folks, life on this earth is short, but eternity is long. If you have not repented of your sins and asked the Lord Jesus Christ to save you, why not make that decision today? Tomorrow is not promised.